Oh, yes, Daddy. <laughs> well, yeah, um, hi, Andy here, and uh, we're alive, pal. So, uh, here we are once again at uh, fucking McDonald's, uh, McDonald's here in Ohio. Um, just because, like I said before, it's got really good Wi Fi, and I can get it even in the parking lot, so that's nice. Um, it does get a little spotty sometimes with the internet connectivity. But for the most part, it's good, and I don't have to worry about people looking at me too much uh, when I'm talking to my cell phone, <laughs> which was not the case uh, over 10 years ago when I first started doing YouTube. So um, I'm not sure exactly what I want to talk about in this uh, in this live stream. It's not really so much of an update per se, but just kind of uh, Kind of, I guess a little bit of uh, a little bit of introspection because you know the fall time, uh, you know, gets me feeling very introspective and just makes me gives me time to uh, to review what I've done this year and just lately in general and you know the weather getting colder it kind of brings me more into this this introspective mood. I don't know if anybody else does this, but this is just a certain ism that I have, I guess. Uh, so today I actually came into McDonald's way earlier. I had a bunch of other stuff I had to do So just to show you how long I've fucking been here working on stuff. Um, I got breakfast from McDonald's. I got a friggin uh, I don't usually get breakfast at McDonald's, but when I do it's always a steak egg and cheese bagel Phenomenal stuff. Uh, it's definitely not healthy but uh, it's definitely good stuff to have every once in a while. And I also got a large coffee with, uh, with two creams. Uh, you know, I don't really like adding sugar to it. And I think there's plenty of sugar in the cream as it is. So, you know, I think it's fine. Uh, still got a little bit in there. Uh, but I forgot how blazingly hot regular McDonald's coffee was. So I had to go back in and get a little cup of ice and uh, work on that. So in any event. And that's about all I want to say about the war in Vietnam. So let's get on with this, uh, this kind of stream of conscious uh, live stream <laughs> sort of video. Um, I really do enjoy doing these because there's no, there's no pressure for me to record something, take it back, edit out all the ums, the ahs, the you knows, and the, just kind of the parts that don't really go anywhere. And it just gives me, just gives me a platform to just talk about what I want in a more, for me anyway, for a more uh, natural format in, in live streaming versus recording for a video where I have to hit certain marks and make sure my words are punchy and I'm looking at the camera, which, you know, I'm not doing here. Is, you know, I just like looking around. That's just kind of how I am. But in any event, uh, so today, I guess we'll start by uh, talking about why I'm still here. Why am I still still making YouTube videos after all these years? Uh, for those who don't know, um, I started my journey on YouTube way, way early into YouTube's life. Um, I originally found the site. Um, I was going to ITT Tech at the time in Dayton, back when ITT Tech was still around. And uh, <clears throat> during, you know, in between classes or like during break periods that we'd have during class um my friends and i would look up just funny videos online and keep in mind this was like early to mid 2000s so the quality was definitely not where it is today and a lot of it was you know just home movie style america's funny some video style stuff you know and it was, you know a lot of people getting punched in the junk or skateboard fails or early versions of sketch comedy from like college humor and stuff like that so it was a lot of a lot of very early viral hits um, but eventually came across this site called YouTube and uh, just give you guys an idea of what uh, the online video sharing platform and whatever else was like back in the day um, um, for most other sites, you had to submit your video to the site and it would go through like an admin or a curator or something like that. And if they liked your video, then they would put it up on the site. 
but it's not like it is with YouTube where you just can upload pretty much anything short of copyright stuff and whatever, but excuse me. But that was kind of one of the key points with YouTube back in the day was that anybody could upload virtually anything and uh you know, created this sense of community versus all the other video sharing websites, which are just kind of people are just kind of coming and going really fast. You know, they'd watch really short clips of like cat videos or like I said, people getting punched in the junk or whatever. A lot of the early viral video hits out there. Um, and then they would just leave and either go to another site or do something else. Uh, but with YouTube, you know, because you had people uploading on a fairly consistent basis, um, but back then's consistent basis was like maybe once a week or once every other week. It's a lot different now, people uploading daily and stuff, but um, since you had people uploading on a consistent basis, um, you had a lot of the early, early vlogging scene as well. And uh, the people that inspired me to to even just get an account on YouTube because, you know, for the longest time I just watched videos. I never really signed up for an account because I felt like I didn't really need to. But with more and more people, um, you know, joining the YouTube platform and making their own content and stuff, I felt that, um, you know, I wanted to leave some comments on videos. I never really thought of making my own stuff because I didn't have the camera equipment or anything like that to uh, to work on or to use or even the editing software or even a powerful enough computer to put it all together. Um, I just wanted to start up an account to leave comments on people's videos that I thought were really interesting to interact with them. And that was the, the other the other big hook for me on YouTube was, you know, not only seeing people uh, post consistent content uh, about whatever it is they're into. Uh, but it was also that interaction between the uh, the viewers and the creators. You know, it was that relationship that really, you know, solidified YouTube for me. And it's, you know, something that I think has kind of been a little bit lost in the sauce of this whole, uh, you know, making money online thing that a lot of creators are pursuing and on them or wanting to make money, but I think that, you know, they're focused too much on the money and need to focus more on just making something that they're into. And then eventually, if they market it right, you know, the money will come. But, uh, you know, for me, uh, back in 2006, I signed up for my, okay, there we go. All right, <laughs> sorry about that disconnection there thing. But any event, any event like I was saying, uh, I first signed up for a YouTube account back in 2006. Um, that was my first channel, which was, you know, just known as andy -san. And I had that channel for over 10 years before I decided to move all my stuff over to uh, another channel. And then, you know, earlier this, you know, like a couple, like what, a month ago or so, some change, something like that, uh, that I decided to move or split my content. But <laughs> we're getting a little ahead there. Um, but I signed up for my first YouTube channel back in 2006. Um, it was originally just to, to leave comments on other people's videos and also to subscribe to them, which was another new feature that YouTube had that the other video sharing sites didn't have, was the ability to subscribe to um, people on the site. So whenever they posted a new video, you get a little email update saying, you know, hey, Tokyo Kuni uploaded a video. Or, you know, Tokyo Swan uploaded a new video. You should check it out. I'm like, all right, cool. So that way I don't have to like constantly go back to their page and refresh and be like, did they upload a new video yet? What's going on? <laughs> um, it's kind of funny thinking about that now, considering the whole YouTube subscriber issues that we've been having the past couple years. But uh, it was a simpler time on YouTube. Um, you know, it's just. People didn't really know what the platform was, so they were just kind of figuring that out themselves. Um, for me, like I said, I really enjoyed a lot of the uh, the early uh, J-vlogging scene, which is Japan vlogging scene. Um, a lot of the early players, like you know, like I mentioned earlier, you know, Tokyo Kuni, 
uh, Tokyo Swan. Um, really enjoyed their videos. And even still, you know, over a decade later, I like going back and watching their stuff. Now, granted, it's uh, it's not in HD, you know, 1080p or even 4K or anything like that. It's very low resolution, but I just like the, uh, just kind of the heart that those, those videos had, you know, it's just, it wasn't like, you know, they made it slick or, you know, made it tailor-made to, you know, get views and clicks and, you know, they weren't throwing in the whole, like, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel for more updates and all this kind of crap that you see YouTubers do nowadays, which is kind of annoying to me. Um, you know, when I do it, it's just at the end and even then, you know, it's just a couple seconds. I don't front load stuff. I don't like doing that. I've tried doing it, but I just, I don't know, I felt scummy doing it. So I stopped. <laughs> uh, but in any event, um, you know, watching those early creators live their lives out and about Japan, um, got more into that scene as more and more people were picking up cameras and doing their thing around Japan. And then, you know, as you know as Tokyo is you know a city that kind of a lot of people come and go you know I saw a lot of people you know leave Japan and you know they just didn't pick up video after that you know they just kind of faded into obscurity and you know just stopped making videos stopped doing anything on YouTube so just, channels just kind of died out which is you know to me kind of sad you know because you know, and thankfully that's not as much of a case as it was back in the day. You know, back in the day, if you left Japan, you know, your channel was pretty much DOA. You know, you know, people just stopped making videos after they left Japan. Uh, but thankfully that's not so much the case anymore. There's plenty of channels out there that continue to make content even after they left Japan. I mean, look at my channel, <laughs> for what it's worth. Uh, recently, we, this particular channel... Uh, my life, personal life channel, um, just recently passed uh, 10 subscribers, which I know might not seem like much to some people, but, you know, for a channel that is, for now, uploading primarily my older content, which, you know, like I said, isn't in fancy HD or isn't really well put together, you know, that's definitely an accomplishment. And I know that there are some people out there that don't like the older videos, um, I've been seeing a lot of thumbs down on the, uh, the archive updates, uploads and whatever. Um, but you know, it kind of is what it is. I know some people just want to see the new stuff and I think that's why I've been pushing to make more of these live streams more often. Just so that way you guys get a little taste of, uh, of both, you know? So if you don't like the old stuff, you know, you got some newer stuff to, uh, to watch. Um, it's kind of giving you a little bit of the best of both worlds, I guess. <laughs> but, you know, it kind of is what it is. And, uh, you know, the reason I'm pu uh, putting up those those old videos on this channel um, is, you know, for one, to show that I'm uploading consistently on this channel, which is good. Um, and uh, gives you guys something to, to watch during days or whatever that I don't have time to put together something or I'm busy and I can't come out to McDonald's and live stream <laughs> or whatever the case. Um, you know, so there's always like a constant stream of, of content with that channel, this channel rather, I should say. Um, so at least you guys have something. And also to establish the context of what types of videos I was making back in the day and to show the progression that I've made since you know i feel like i've i've really developed as you know a, a, a creator i guess on the youtube platform um you know i've really helped hone my chops um, especially doing freelance video editing that's helped me tremendously because before you know i was doing primarily just all a roll stuff you know i never never incorporated b-roll you know because i was kind of of that old school YouTuber mentality of, you know, if you just post it, they'll come. And, uh, you know, that's good for some things like these live streams, I hope. <laughs> but, uh, you know, for some things, it's best to have little 
b-roll shots in there to kind of help break up the monotony of the uh, of the shot you know it can't just all be face all talking head stuff all the time <laughs> lens flare but anyway um oh, i got the coffee burps sorry <laughs> we're live pal but anyway uh what was I saying? but yeah um doing the freelance video editing thing has really helped me um know what to look for when it comes to shooting b-roll and how to place it within a scene and all this kind of stuff and uh you know i can't wait to get back out to japan to make the kind of videos that i want to make you know not just not just for my own channel but also for other channels as well you know for my current clients and you know prospective clients as well uh really I really do enjoy making videos and you know that's the thing man you know there's there's been a lot of uh adversity that i've had to face in in my journey on youtube you know i went from just simply being a commentator on videos to picking up the camera myself making videos that you know if you've seen some of the the recent archival updates you know those videos really aren't all that good uh the quality is pretty shit, but uh you know, keep in mind that's, you know, how it was back in the day. But, you know, just the overall pacing and everything just wasn't really all that good. Um, but, you know, like I said, I'm uploading those videos to establish that context, to show that, you know what, when you first start off doing anything, whether it's YouTube or whatever, you're not going to be good. You're going to suck. In my case, I sucked out loud. You know, I was fucking terrible. And some may say I'm still terrible, but, but I digress. Um, uh, you know, so if uh, if you're worried about, you know, people making fun of you, saying that your videos suck and this, that, and the other, you know, don't listen to them, man. It's just, you know, there's, uh, there's a difference between, like, constructive criticism, which says, you know, hey, it'd be cool if, you know, you stabilized your shots or got, like, a tripod or, you know, maybe showed some more B-roll or you know, clean up your audio or stuff like that. You know, that's that's actionable stuff that you can work on. Uh, but, you know, just people just saying that your videos suck and, you know, whatever, you know, it's just, who cares? You know, you're not making the, your videos for them. If they say your videos suck, like, <laughs> where's the, uh, the upside in trying to please somebody who's obviously not going to be pleased because they don't like your videos to begin with, you know? So... Kind of is what it is, you know? And I say that a lot because it's kind of an Ohioism, you know? It is what it is. <laughs> Damn, lens flare. Freaking. Well, any event. Okay, there we go. That's a comfortable position without the lens flare. Uh, so, yeah, you know, you just got to keep on doing it. And, uh, you know, for me, I was doing YouTube, you know, back before it was cool to do. You know, I was doing it. I remember... You know, when I got to my first ship, the USS Kurtz, um, a lot of people, not only on my ship, but even within my own division, didn't really know what to make of my whole video making hobby. You know, they thought it was just really, really dorky and really nerdy. And, uh, you know, they just thought it was, you know, just a <laughs> hopeless dork for doing it. But, uh, you know, when I got to my next ship, that's around the time that YouTube started to get some more mainstream attention, started getting more into the, the cultural zeitgeist. And, uh, you know, my next ship, you know, my last ship actually <laughs> turned out to be, um, was a lot more, you know, they weren't really supportive. They just were like, oh, okay, you know, <laughs> they were just kind of like, whatever, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal to them versus, you know, my first ship, which, you know, they didn't like it at all. <laughs> they thought it was super dorky and stuff. But, you know, on the plus side, I actually have, you know, video of my entire naval career from 2010, 2015. So, you know, for better or worse, I can go back and look at all those videos and, you know, see myself during that time. You know, I get to see the different ports that we'd hit and you know just kind of see where i personally was at that time you know what i was thinking what i was worried about what i was focused on 
you know, what plans I had for the future at that time. And, you know, that's another reason why I still make videos is to establish a legacy and to show, um, to give myself some sort of progress, you know, because I can go back and look at some of my earlier videos, even just a year ago, and just see how far I've come and, you know, what I've done since then and everything, you know. And uh, <laughs> if anything, this has gotten a lot shorter, so that's that's a plus, you know. I tried tried out a new hairstyle, didn't work, so it is what it is. Ended up just looking like a fat lesbian, <laughs> but you know, case of raw. So yeah, that's why I really enjoy making videos, even today, because you know, this whole demonetization thing on my editing channel, you know, kind of got me thinking about you know, where do I see myself going moving forward? And, uh, you know, it just, for some people, it would kind of take the wind out of their sails and be like, well, I think I'm going to give up this whole YouTube thing. But, you know, I felt like, you know, I needed to, to sort of change my strategy around and, uh, you know, work on some other things. And, you know, just work on myself, basically, because... I felt like, you know, I wasn't really in the right position to, to succeed, you know, not just on YouTube, but in life, you know, and that's something I've been dealing with, you know, since I moved back to Ohio was, you know, it's, don't get me wrong, it's not all bad, you know, I do enjoy um, being back in familiar territory and hanging out with the family and stuff like that, but... You know, for me, this isn't the environment that I need to be in to, you know, to grow as a person. And also, you know, shoot the videos that I want to shoot, meet up with the people I want to meet up with, and work with them, collab, all that kind of stuff. You know, it's just, this ain't it, Chief. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, and even if I lived in a bigger city like Columbus or whatever, that'd be better. But at the same time, again... You know, it's not something that I really want, you know. Um, so that's why, you know, there's motivation to, to move back to Japan. You know, it's been something I've been wanting to do since I was a little kid. And I'm really grateful that I got to do that when I was in the, in the Navy, you know, from 2013 to 2015. Um, I really enjoyed the Japan experience. I uh, didn't so much like being stationed out there, as I've talked about in many videos. had a lot of really troubling times. But, you know, outside of work, I really enjoyed Japan. It just, I don't know, I just, I just felt, I felt like that was the only place where I could, like, 100% be myself without worrying about people judging me. Because, you know... It didn't really matter where I was at in the States. I always felt like, to some extent, people were kind of judging me, you know. It's just whatever, you know. But in Japan, I didn't really feel judged so much. You know, if anything, it was just, you know, a case of, oh, a foreigner. <laughs> you know, a white guy. And that's about as far as it got. So, <laughs> you know, I was just like, okay, so, like, no matter what I do, no matter how much I try to fit in and to assimilate with the culture... You know, I'm still just going to be, oh, white guy. So, you know, it kind of gave me that, um, what Aaron Hansen would call uh, the fuck it energy, basically. Um, just gave me the, the motivation to to go out and just say fuck it, you know. People aren't going to, you know, they're, they're going to see me as just the white guy anyway. So it doesn't matter how much I try to fit in, I'm still just going to be the white guy. So, uh, might as well just say fuck it and be the best me that I can because, you know, who cares, right? But, you know, so I ended up, you know, dressing in, in flashier attire, you know, versus here, which is, like, super conservative. So, a lot of, you know, even the bright blue might be a bit much, but, uh, you know, a lot of neutral kind of darker colors. Um, that's kind of the attire for around here. Um, which is, you know, again, is another reason why I want to move because I feel like, you know, it's kind of stifling being here fashion-wise because I don't want to stand out so much. 
Uh, whereas over there, I don't mind standing out a bit because I already stand out, you know, <laughs> you know, just by me being a white guy, I already stand out. So I might as well just kind of go all the way with it. And of course, you know, respectful to the culture and people, and I'm not going to be like a fucking bag of douche out there. Like I see so many other people being. Um, but at the same time, you know, I'm going to, going to do me and, uh, dress how I want to dress and act how I want to act, you know, within legal limits of the law, of course. And, uh, like I said, you know, I felt like I was the most, the most of myself out there. And I think that's one of the reasons why I want to go back. And it's something I haven't really talked about in the videos. You know, I've talked about how much I like, yeah. you know, the aesthetic of Japan, being able to network with people, collab with people, uh, just being back in that environment. You know, I've talked a lot about, about that, but I haven't really talked so much about the you know, feeling like myself out there, you know, because that's, that's one of the weird things about uh, living abroad that I've noticed was, you know, I feel more like myself being out there because I don't have to worry about the judgment of, you know, other Americans and stuff. And even if I do run into some expats, they're like, what the fuck are you doing? You know, it's still kind of like, I don't care because <laughs> they're just fucking... Oh, another random white guy. Okay, whatever, dude. You know? <laughs> um, and it was weird. I felt, like, oddly comforting. or It was oddly comforting to me being, you know, even just on the train, like, being the only white guy that I could see, you know, in the train cart. It's just, I don't know. It's something kind of comforting about it. You know, I didn't have to worry about people taking my shit or bothering me too much because... You know, a lot of Japanese people don't want to, you know, mess with you if you're a, you're a gaijin, foreigner. Um, then there's some that are overly, you know, well, can I touch your hair? Can I touch your face? Oh my god, your nose is so big, you know. Uh, but I never personally ran across too many of those people. Um, it's mostly just people that just kind of wanted to get the fuck away from me. So I'm like, you know, some for some people it may bother them that nobody wants to sit next to them on the train. For me, I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> You know, that's right. Stay away from me. You know, I'm cool with that. You know, it's like Japan kind of gets the whole uh, introvert experience, you know, and uh, I gotta drink my coffee, huh? So, yeah. Yeah, I'm getting kind of low. Sorry. Oh, freaking the lens flare. But anyway, Japan kind of gets the whole. Uh, uh, introvert experience like I was saying sorry brain kind of stopped um, so you know they usually don't come up and bug me like uh, like Americans do you know people asking me for money or you know wanting to help me find stuff in the store and I'm like I'm just looking leave me alone <laughs> you know they with some of the stores you know they have like little store greeters so like the the most that they would do just you know they, you know all that stuff but, you know, whatever, you know, you just go about doing your thing, you know, and uh, you'll be fine, so. Um, and even in Tokyo, where there's like a shit tons of people, <laughs> um, you know, you'd think somebody with, uh, with social anxiety like myself and just being introverted and stuff, um, I would get bothered by being on crowded trains and in crowded places and stuff, but, if you pick the spots right, and you pick the right time, it's really not so bad. You know, there's some parts of Tokyo that I'm walking around in that it feels like I'm not even really in Tokyo. It's like, I just feel like I'm in a small town or a suburb or something like that. Uh, but then there's some places that really fucking raise the old Ajita, as it were. You know, Harajuku is a prime example of that. That's one of... I always dreaded going to Harajuku because there's always shit tons of people there and i remember even going there during fucking golden week which is the worst like straight up fucking uh ugh, so many people and i think that was right around the time that i actually recorded my harajuku video um you know just with the gopro showing like just a sea of people oh man social anxiety was at a 
high level that day. But, you know, I've learned to combat that to some to some aspect. Um, most of them, like I said, you know, they don't really want to bother me. So they're just kind of going about their own way. So as long as I got the headphones on and I'm kind of focused on where I want to go and stuff, or just focus on little signs and stuff, not so much on them, then it kind of lowers lowers the old Ajita a bit. Um, so that's kind of how I get around, you know, a crowded place like Tokyo with crippling social anxiety <laughs> instead of crippling depression. Like, I got that, but, uh, you know. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> like I said, this uh, this live stream, I didn't really have a, a planned topic or anything, despite what the title says, you know, why I'm still making videos. Um, you know, I just want to kind of make it a bit more freeform, just kind of talk about some things that I hadn't really talked about before, you know, and like I said, I enjoy making videos because I enjoy, I enjoy the process, you know, whether it's making my own stuff or, you know, especially in making other people's stuff, you know, it's just the process of finding the video by putting all the pieces together and how to put those pieces together to make something coherent and it's it's a lot of fun you know it's a lot like to me what programming was back when I was going to IT Tech um, I remember my friends and I were just staying in class you know sometimes we'd you know skip breaks working on coding projects and stuff we might you know some of them might sneak out for a quick smoke but come right back and we'd just be grinding on this fucking project and you know debugging it and stuff but when the program ran how it should ran how it should run when everything worked it was just such such a satisfying feeling and i get that i get that same feeling whenever i put together a video it's just like okay you got to get all the pieces together make sure the video is not buggy or whatever and just kind of hone in on the parts that aren't like overall shaky and you know get the nice smooth movements you know, put in a lot of warp stabilizer in some cases, um, you know, and, uh, you know, just putting it all together, finding the right song, making sure the, the audio is nice and crisp and leveled, and, you know, just putting it all together, man. It's a, it's a wonderful experience, and despite my many setbacks, you know, demonetization for my one channel being one of the most recent ones, um, I still, even after all these years and after all these different setbacks, I still enjoy making videos. And that's the thing, you know. I'm not going to stop doing this until I don't enjoy making videos anymore. And, you know, I've been, been on YouTube for going on 15 years now, which is <laughs> tremendous to say. Uh, you know, and I don't feel like stopping anytime soon. Now, the frequency might change as, you know, life happens and motivation happens or doesn't happen in my case. Uh, but I still enjoy making videos. I still enjoy putting together other people's videos. And for now, I feel like that's not going to change. But, you know, if it does, that's when I'll know I'll, I'll have to hang it up. But for now, I'm going to keep on going strong. So, I think I've rambled and raved long enough about why I enjoy making videos, why I want to go back to Japan a little bit, and uh, other things. So, yeah, if you made it this far in the live stream, let me know in the comments down below, in the boopy de boops uh, what type of, or just, like, what else you want me to talk about, basically, because, you know, like I said, I really do enjoy doing these live streams, because I don't have to worry about, um you know, just uploading, you know, or like taking the video back home, downloading it and uh, cutting together stuff. And, you know, I don't have to worry about cutting out the ums, the ahs, the you knows. It's just, just a stream of conscious rant type video. Um, I don't want to, you know, I still want to have the well put together videos as well, but these are, if anything, they're really helpful for me. You know, it's almost like therapy in a way. But anyway, let me know in the comments down below, in the boopy de boops what other stuff you guys want me to talk about. 
and uh, I'll do my best to uh, to oblige to that. But for now, guys, this is Andy Son signing off for now. Like I said, <laughs> thank you guys for watching this long ass live stream as well as my other live streams, and also want to especially thank you for watching my archive videos. Focus, you focus. Damn thing, come on. There we go. Okay. Anyway, uh, I want to thank you especially for watching my archive videos. Uh, even though I know there's somebody going around thumbing them all down, so boo. <laughs> but you know, it's all part of the process, man. It's all, all to give you guys the context of you know I've been making videos for fucking years and years. They weren't all the best. Some may st some may say they're still not the best. <laughs> But, um, you know, if anything, it's to show the progression I've made from, you know, 2008, 2009 to today, 2018. <laughs> so definitely felt like I've come a long way since then. And I uh, want to thank you guys for joining me on that journey whenever you, you know, subscribe to my channels over the years. And uh, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.